So the first thing you're going to want to do before you modify your computer at all is to get a Windows 7 uh, image that is compatible with your product key that is on the bottom of your laptop. So I have Home Premium, so that's and all these uh, all these laptops uh, for the Vio T series have only 64-bit operating systems on them. So you're going to want to make sure that you get the 64-bit version of the operating system that you selected when you purchased your laptop. So since I have Home Premium, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to download the Home Premium image of Windows 7. This is a very legitimate process because of the fact that this is from a direct Microsoft pro partner. Now, um, the way that I got to this website, which actually provides you the links to the downloads from the Microsoft partner, um, was from a Dell website, which is actually dated, a post dated... Um, September 2011. So this person posted pretty much the same thing we're experiencing where we want to do a clean install of Windows but we don't have any disks because uh, the OEM, in this case Dell, in our case Sony, hasn't provided us any replacement disks. So this person, which is on that website, I'm going to actually just click on it so we can get back to that site. So you can see it's the same exact site. Um, has compiled a list of legitimate uh, downloads from the Microsoft partner. So if you want to download, what you can do is you want to find the English. So let's go down to English, English USA here. And you want to find your, your version. So I have a Windows 7 Home Premium X64, 64-bit. So you're going to want to find yours, your version, if you have Professional, if you have Ultimate. But um, what I got is the 64, and I'm getting the most updated version, which is SP1 Media Refresh. So you want to look for that version um, and click on that and then what it will do is actually it will download and you can see it's coming from the Digital River, it's not from any illegitimate source. Click on save and it will start saving for me in my save file. While you wait for your download to complete, one thing you can do is download UNet Boot In, which is a utility that allows you to take that ISO that's currently downloading with Windows 7 and to put it on a USB stick if you do not have a portable DVD drive like I do. Um, you can click on download here for Windows and then I'll bring up this window and it'll actually start downloading automatically for you. For this modification you're going to need a USB stick with at least 256 megabytes of storage space on it. Uh, this will be for your Gparted. You're going to need also at least a 4 gigabyte or higher USB based uh, drive so it could be USB stick it could be something like this where it's an SD card to an SD card reader you cannot use only an SD card in the slot because it does not boot from the SD card or go the CD route which I have a portable DVD drive which is also a burner because this is going to be important because you need to burn your image to the disk that's inside and I have a blank DVD in here uh, so you're going to need either this to get Windows on it, or you're going to need this to get Windows on it. One or the other. Before you do any formatting or changing of your computer, you want to make sure you download the drivers for this laptop, um, at least a few of the drivers. That way you can at least get back online and, and whatnot. Because when you format this machine, the only thing you're going to have access to is the USB ports on the side. Everything else is disabled. Ethernet, SD card, everything. So. Um, you want to make sure that you give yourself at least some way of getting back on a network that way you can re-download most of these drivers back to your computer. So what I recommend you download is the Ethernet driver which is under network. It's called Realtek PCIe GBE Family Controller and if you notice here they actually specify that in the device manager it's going to be called Ethernet Controller and if you don't have a way to access an Ethernet connection then the other way to go is the wireless LAN down here and download the Aetheros wireless network adapter and that's going to be labeled as your network controller so that's your wireless so you download both of those that gives you access to the internet once you're back on Windows once your download is complete you're going to want to decide if you're going to do the USB method or the DVD method if you want to go down the DVD route you can essentially, when you get Image Burn installed, you would select Image, Write Image to Disk as follows. The first thing you're going to want to do is select 
destination type and choose your drive. And you're going to want to look at the supported write speeds. You're going to want to choose the slowest write speed, which is 3x, and you're going to put that down here. That's the first thing you do, just to make sure that you do that properly. Next thing you want to do is you want to select where the file is. So my file here is, uh, that's the file. So you just select that. And again, we want to make sure that's 3x, and then you want to select write. So that's the way you do it through the DVD method. The USB method requires you to select the image location, same way. You choose the location where you downloaded it, select it, it comes up there. You push uh, USB drive, and I don't have a USB drive in, but once you choose your USB drive, uh, you select the USB drive that you're, um, that's going to be 4 gigs or more because you need at least 4 gigs to do this. I recommend that you just get an 8 gig USB stick and call it a day. Uh, plug that in, select it, push OK, and it'll actually start to extract. Before you continue on to um, the rest of this process, you want to make sure that we create our USB G parted live stick, as it's called. And you need to download a ISO version of G parted to do this. So let's uh, click on, let's, well, you do a Google search and you can find it at sourceforge.net. All right. And once you do that, you click on download. It comes to this portion here and it should actually give you a download pop up in like the next few seconds. It says ISO. We want to make sure we save that. Say OK. All right. So once this is done, then you can use the same process that you just did with UNet boot in with the USB stick. You make sure that you're using your 256 megabyte USB stick. You select on disk image, you select the image and you say uh, where the file, where it's located, the drive is located and you push OK. So in order, in order to do this modification, you're going to need to utilize these because you're going to have to take the hard drive out in order to do this modification. Um, so if this is too complex for you, I recommend you stop now before you do any serious damage to your computer. While I've already shown you how to do this in my part one of the hardware review, I'm going to show you an updated way of taking off this battery, which is a lot quicker. So as I've already shown you, you should use these here. The flathead one is the one you're going to use here. You're going to cotch this flathead inside here as such. And in doing so, you can actually easily turn this open. You may not have heard that click. There you go, comes right off. Okay, that's that. And then this is where you need the Phillips head. Three. You're going to need the Phillips head again to get these holding screws. And do not use a magnet. Or even a magnetic tip screwdriver for that matter. You what I like to do usually is I like to pull from the back here to kind of get it the, the front to get it loose. Then you can pick up from like right here. Slide it out. That's that. And just plug it in and it'll boot up just like any other. You will be greeted by a prompt to enter the RAID option screen. Once you follow those instructions such that you enter this screen, you'll be greeted by this screen. This screen gives you the configuration of your SSD. In order to use your SSD to install the Windows 7 operating system on it, you must delete the RAID volume and you must reset disks to non-RAID. If by any chance the screen prevents you from resetting disks to non-RAID, follow the on-screen instructions, which is very clear and straightforward, on how to uh, reset the disks to non-RAID. When you are done, you should see in the bottom right corner, non-RAID disk to 29.8 gigabytes. After modifying your SSD to a non-RAID disk, then the next thing you want to do is get your 256 gigabyte G-parted USB, plug it in, and turn on the power. You can be greeted by this screen, you push enter. So this is the first blue prompt, push enter. Here's the second one, push enter, and the third one is right here, you push enter again. 
So you'd be greeted by this screen here. The first thing you want to do is take the partition, which for you should be labeled as unformatted or unknown, and you want to push delete. Then you'll see unallocated. If the other one says unformatted, click that one and push delete as well until you get uh, essentially the something that looks like this, where it says unallocated, unallocated, 2982 GB. And then you want to push apply. When you push apply, another screen will come up and you push apply again. And once you push apply, then this will now be unallocated. The next thing you want to do is you click on that item and select new NTFS partition and OK. Like so. Then your partition that went from unallocated will come to 2982 unused and 2982 unused. All right. And then from there you push apply and apply again. And then the last thing you want to do is you want to select manage flags and select the boot flag. Only boot. Do not select any of the other ones. And if any of these other ones are selected, uncheck them and only put boot. And then close that. And once you've done this, you can close this out. You can go to exit. And then you can reset. And when you go to reset it, you're going to have to be very quick about this because you want to boot into Windows now. So you're going to have to take out your USB and plug in your other USB for booting or you can use your USB uh, portable drive. And that should have your Windows uh, 7 disk already in there and burnt uh, from our previous discussion and should be ready to go. Next, you're going to want to make sure that you select the only partition available to you and push next. Windows should install as normal, just allow it to finish and then you should do the following. Once you've installed Windows on your SSD, then the first thing you're going to have to do is slide the drive back in and you want to make sure that this corner here goes above the hole. Um, this, all these corners go above the hole. Slide it back in, okay. Tighten down these screws, the three Phillips head screws with the screwdriver. Then you put down the metal casing here, three. Hand tight again for that. Then you want to put the battery in. And that's done. All right, I'll boot into my USB down here. And external drive set up, so it's just gonna boot right into my G part. This is the configuration that we start out with when uh, you first come in to this uh, G parted and you look at your drive configuration you have your recovery and you have your secondary hard drive and you just gotta come in here manage flags and undo the boot partition you gotta check it off okay close it make sure you see diag and you see no boot partition there then uh, you don't have to apply anything it just does it automatically and then you close that out you click on this until your finger falls off because otherwise it doesn't want to come up you say shut down or reboot well just reboot and then you want to make sure that as soon as this thing says okay it's going to reset you pull this USB out because otherwise it's going to boot from that and you're back to Windows again I get that so very simple you just need this though it's, it's impossible without that um, What?